Okay, so we've seen the simple random walk. And the simple random walk is the most important example, but just one example, from a bigger class of Markov processes called the general random walks. So let's see what the more general random walks look like. So we'll start this by noting that there's a different way that we can write the simple random walk from before. And that different way is we can write it as xn equals x0, the starting point, plus sum from i equals 1 to n as zi, where our starting point, x0, was 0. And these zi's, they kind of represent how you move each time. So for us, zi was either equal to plus 1 if we move up, or minus 1 if we move down. So it's plus 1, probability p, minus 1 with probability q. And these are all iid, independent and identically distributed. And the zi's are independent of x0 as well. So if you see, that means we're starting at zero and then we're just adding up all the movements, which might be plus one movements or minus one mo movements. So it should be clear that that's the same thing as the simple random walk we wrote before. But if you want to pause and just think about that for a while until you've convinced yourself it's true, that's fine. But the point is, we can look at this expression up here and say... Well, we could pick a different x0. Instead of starting at 0, we could start at some other point, or we could start from a point picked at random. And these zi, which are sometimes called the increments of the process because those are the movements, we could pick a different distribution for the increments. It doesn't just have to be plus 1 with probability p and minus 1 with probability q. We can have different increments, perhaps in more dimensions, perhaps the real numbers, or just perhaps they can be plus 2 and minus 2. So anything that satisfies this red box equation at the top is called a random walk. So anything that satisfies that equation is a random walk. In the particular case, where the increments are plus or minus 1 with probabilities p and q, and we start from 0, that's a simple random walk. So the simple random walk is the most important one that we looked at in the previous subsection. But more generally, anything that follows the red boxed equation is a random walk for some different distribution of x0 and all these zi's. But the nice thing about writing it in this form is that we can very quickly work out the expectation and the variance of our random walk. Let's do that. So the expectation of xn. Well, we can just substitute in the red boxed equation. Right, that's the expected value of x0 plus sum equals i equals 1 to z and zi. But of course, expectation is linear, so we can take the expectation inside the brackets. Expectation x0 plus sum i equals 1 to n. Expected value of zi. And because these zi's are identically distributed, they all have the same expectation. So we can say they all have the same expectation as z1, say. That's n lots of the expected value of z1. So if you give me a starting distribution x0 and some increments distribution for the z's, I can tell you what the expectation of xn is. It follows this formula here. Note that we didn't actually use independence there. We just used the identically distributed bit and the linearity of expectation. In the special case of the simple random walk, what can we say then? We can say the expected value of xn is, well, the expected value of x0 for the simple random walk, we always start from 0. So that expectation is 0 plus n lots of what's the expectation of zi, this zi for the random walk. Well, Expected as zi is we go up 1 with probability p, that's p lots of 1. We go down 1 with probability q, so that's q lots of minus 1, that's p minus q. So we get 
n p minus q. That's the expectation of a simple random walk. Note that uh, the expectation gets bigger in absolute value as n gets bigger, unless p equals q equals a half. In fact, let's note that specifically. For the simple symmetric random walk, which remember is the case where p equals q equals a half, random walk, uh, p equals a half, q equals a half, so p minus q is zero, expected value of xn equals zero. So that means it stays the same on average in the symmetric case. All the other cases, it gets further away from zero on average as n gets bigger. OK, that's expectation, but we can do just the same with the variance if we want to, the same way. What's the variance of xn? Well, substitute in the red boxed formula at the top to get that it's the variance of x0 plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of zi. And now we are going to use independence, because you need independence to be able to take a variance inside the brackets. That's variance of x0 plus n lots of the variance of z1, say, for the same reason as before. OK, so if you give me an x0 and a distribution for the z's, I can tell you the variance of your random walk. What is it for the simple random walk? SRW, simple random walk. The variance of x0, well, for the simple random walk, we definitely start from 0. We certainly start from 0, so there's no variance there. We know it's exactly 0. What about the variance of z1? That'll be a little bit trickier to work out. Well, you'll remember, of course, the variance is defined as the expectation of uh, z1 minus the expected value of z1 squared. And we worked out the expected value of z1 earlier. It was p minus q, wasn't it? So this is z1 minus p minus q squared. Okay, so with probability p, z1 is 1, so that's p, 1 minus p minus q squared, plus q, lots of minus 1, because with probability q, z1 is minus 1. Ah, and then you have to do a little bit of algebra with that. You might want to pause the video and try it out yourself. Uh, otherwise, the uh, full details are in the notes. It's only about four lines of working. But it turns out the answer is 4pq. So either try working that out yourself or look at the notes. So we can put in up here 4npq. That's the variance of the simple random walk. Note again that unless p is 0 or 1, which are boring cases, the variance is getting bigger and bigger as n gets bigger, which means the further along in time we go, the harder it is to predict where the simple random walk would be. Again, just for the sake of writing it down, the simple symmetric random walk, SSRW, simple symmetric random walk, where p equals q equals a half, and we have variance of xn equals 4 times p times q times n, and uh, the two halves cancel out with the 4, and we just get n, which is kind of a nice expression. So again, we can calculate the variance of any random walk, including the simple random walk, and including especially the simple symmetric random walk. Just before we finish this subsection, one last comment is that, as with a lot of random variable types things, it can sometimes be useful to do a normal approximation Uh, where if, for example, x0 is 0, so expected value of xn is mu n for some mu, the variance of xn is sigma squared n for some sigma squared, uh, then you have your old normal approximation, which is that xn is approximately normally distributed with mean mu n 
various sigma squared n. That can just sometimes be a useful fact if you want to know roughly what the distribution of your random walk is at time n, and you can't be bothered to work it out exactly, you can just use a normal approximation based on these calculations of what the expectation and the variance are. And if n's big enough, that's normally a decent approximation.